In this video, I'm going to show you how we can write strategies for backtesting.py involving fractional shares. By default, the framework only allows us to transact in whole units of a given asset, which can be a problem if you're trading things like a Bitcoin, which at the moment are about $20,000 each. It's impractical to run your backtests only trading in increments of $20,000, at least for any realistic account size. And so by the end of this video, you'll be able to easily adapt the scripts that you're using to backtest your strategies to trade a smaller fraction as you like of a given asset. So let's jump into Python here and I'll walk you through an example. So I have a basic Python template here. If you're not familiar with the syntax of backtesting.py, how this strategy class works, etc., etc., I have a free course here on YouTube for backtesting.py, which will get you up to speed with all the basics. And so basically what this strategy does as an example strategy is we're taking in this Google data, which comes provided with backtesting.py, so if you want to follow along with the video, you'll be able to use the exact same data I'm using here. So we're using this Google data and we're running a very simple RSI strategy here. So if the RSI crosses over the upper bound here, then we want to close out any positions that we might have. If the RSI goes below the lower bound and we don't already have an open position, then do a self.buy which by default will commit all of the money that we currently have available in the account. So we'll spend all of the cash and buy as many shares as it can. And so if we run this script and we plot out the results here, and we go to the earliest sell here, you can see that it only bought and sold two shares of Google. Now I had a thousand dollars of starting cash here and the price when it bought was about $360. So really, as with all modern brokerages, we should have really been able to buy about 2.7, 2.6 shares of Google here, which means that we're leaving lots of cash on the table. And it means that the strategy that we've backtested here is actually quite different from the strategy we had in mind because it's not committing 100% of the cash like I originally intended. And that's going to mess with all of these statistics here because you're always carrying much more cash than you might expect. For a simple strategy like the one I'm showing you, this effect is very easy to account for. But if you're having a much more complicated strategy, this effect of not committing all the cash that you think you are can definitely throw you off if you go into a live trading environment where you are allowed to trade fractional shares. So how do we fix this problem? The easiest way to do it is to scale the prices of the asset by a given scale factor. So let's see what that looks like. So I'll comment out this plot here just so it doesn't get in the way. And I'll print out the value of that Google data that we had. So let's print that out and see what that looks like. So Google, let's print that out. And if we scroll up here, we'll get a regular open high, low close volume data frame here with the price of Google per share and the total shares traded on that day. And so what we can do here is we can convert this into milli shares or micro shares, or I suppose even nano shares. So instead of giving the open high, low close as the price to buy or sell one share of Google, why don't we make it so it's the price to buy or sell one one thousandth or one one millionth or even one billionth of a share of Google, depending on how many decimal places your broker gives you when it comes to fractionalizing shares or in cryptocurrency. And then we need to multiply the volume by that same factor. So since 22 million full Google shares were traded on this day, that's 22 billion milli shares or one one thousandth of a share. And so this mitigates the problem that we had before, since when Google was $300, we could only fit two of those shares into our $1,000 budget. 
And then we had about $280 left over afterwards. Whereas if we're trading in milli shares here, so one one thousandth of a share, each one one thousandth is going to cost about 30 cents, so 360 divided by a thousand. And therefore, when we run our strategy, we're going to be able to commit all of our money except for about 30 cents, which is an acceptable margin for error. Or like I said before, you could even divide this into one one millionths and then you'd be accurate to within fractions of a penny. So how do we do that? We just have to divide this data by the factor. So I'll set a conversion factor here. So factor is going to be equal to a thousand. So I'll trade in milli shares for now. And then we just want to set each of these columns equal to themselves divided by the factor. So I can do Google dot open is equal to google.open divided by factor. And then I can do this on the next four lines here and I'll just do open, high, low and close. This syntax here, it just means take what's on the left and divide it by what's on the right and then set that equal to this variable. It's just a shorthand for something like google.open is equal to google.open divide by factor. It just saves a bit of typing and perhaps looks a little cleaner. And then the volume, we have to remember to do the inverse, of course, because we're now trading milli shares. So the volume is actually higher where the price is lower. So we'll do Google dot volume multiply equals factor. And then it, I'll print out the data frame again so that we can see what it looks like and we can observe what is happening from our trades perspective here. I'll plot out the data here so we can see what's going on. And now when I go over here, we're now buying 2,757 milli shares of Google or 2.757 shares, which means we're going to be much more accurate in that we've actually committed the full amount of money or very close to the full amount of money that we actually specified, which makes our backtest more effective, especially if you're using this for something like Bitcoin, where we nearly always trade in very small fractions. The only real adjustments that we have to make to this, if we want to export our data somewhere else, is in the trade section here. So you can pull out all of the trades that were made. So if I do print stats dot underscore trades, you can pull out a data frame of all the trades that were made, how many shares were traded, or how many milli shares in this case, the bar at which you entered and exited, the time, the duration, etc, etc. I'll print out the dot to underscore string here so that we can see the full data frame. And so essentially, if we were to export this to some other program that deals with visualizing our portfolio or our trades, we'd want to multiply these back by the conversion factor. And that way we know what we paid per share. And again, we'd want to divide the size here. So we actually bought 2.757 full shares, not 2,757 shares. All the other statistics here will be exactly the same. There's no other adjustments we need to make for them to account for our unit size here. And so to fix that, very, very easy, much like we changed the Google data frame at the beginning. We'll create a new variable here. We'll call it trades. And that's going to be the stats dot underscore trades. I'll get rid of the print for now. And then trades dot entry price is just going to be multiplied by the factor. We'll do the same for the exit price here. And then the size has to be divided by the factor. And then if I print on out trades here, we should be good to go. So you can see this is listing $362 as the buy price, and we're buying 2.757 shares. Now you can, of course, mess with the conversion factor here. So I could say I want to buy one ten thousandth of a share. Ideally, you'd want to set this to the same amount of precision that your broker allows you to trade in. So if your broker allows you to trade in 
one one millionth of a share, then by all means set it to the amount it will make your backtest more realistic, providing that you're accounting for fees and whatnot. And so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it helps you in your algorithmic trading journey. I'll see you in the next video.